the brain, an organ of seemingly endless complexity. But even the most elaborate structures can be broken down into primary building blocks, in this case, neurons. Neurons are vital cells in the brain which help us coordinate our behaviour and go about our lives. The average person, upon adulthood, has around 100 billion of these crucial cells. A neuron in the brain of a baby has only a few fundamental connections. A baby's life is fairly simple. It knows very few complex behaviours and interacts primarily with its mother. As the baby gets to know its siblings and friends, more connections form between neurons in the brain as it learns the behaviour associated with socialising. This formation process continues throughout your life as your relationships develop between friends, parents, relatives and lovers so does your brain and the connections within it. As you interact with more and more people in more and more complex ways, the cells in your brain learn to communicate in much the same way. Synapses are formed not only through social interaction and relationships, but by learning. When you learn a new skill, new synapses form. Learning the moves to a new dance seems difficult at first, but as you continue practicing it becomes easier. This is due to strengthening of synapses through repetition of your dance moves. The same concept can be applied to learning to play an instrument. When you begin to play, the music is hard to read and the rhythms are hard to understand, but with time your fluency in the instrument increases. The average person has 100 trillion synapses working constantly to coordinate individual memory, behaviour, personality and skills. Neurons and synapses cannot maintain themselves. Just as you cannot go without food, water, tools and shelter, cells in the body need proteins to continue functioning. Proteins are paramount to sustaining normal function in the body and brain. Essential proteins for function of synapses include the tau protein, which works to transport substances within the neuron, and the amyloid beta protein, which performs general housekeeping in the cell. When you lose a habit, the synapses you once formed start to degrade. Talent can reduce significantly when you stop practicing, due to the process of natural synaptic degradation. Once you stop dancing, you will gradually forget your moves, and when you stop playing an instrument, your repertoire decreases in size. But this isn't the only way synapses, and the communication between them, can degrade. Occasionally, while a protein is being transcribed from its RNA template, mistakes are made and faulty proteins are formed. These mistakes are usually accounted for and the faulty proteins recognised as junk. But sometimes things go wrong. In Alzheimer's, the most common form of dementia, Amyloid beta proteins get misfolded, but instead of being recognised as junk, they instead begin to build up in the brain and form plaques between nerve cells. This accumulation of tau proteins within the neuron and amyloid beta proteins within the synapse spreads throughout the brain and in a cruel twist of fate, proteins which once helped strengthen and maintain synapses actually begin to aid their demise. Poorly bound tau proteins can no longer form microtubal tracts for transporting substances. Unfortunately, Alzheimer's patients can't get rid of these loose tau proteins and they form tangles inside the neuron.
the accumulation, lack of communication and the loss of the hippocampus involved with memory in the brain are the fundamental causes of Alzheimer's. The degeneration of synapses during Alzheimer's makes it harder for neurons to communicate. Without this essential communication, even learned behaviours become difficult. A musician may forget how to play their instrument, a dancer may forget how to dance, and a sufferer may even forget their close friends and family. Imagine a neuron were a person. This person develops a life of communication and connection. But over time, they begin compulsively accumulating objects of little use or value. These objects form not only a barrier to communication in the fact that hoarding them takes time, energy and effort, but also because they form a literal barrier between that person and those around them. Even the closest connections become distant because this obsession and the time and space it requires force the person into isolation and desolation. This is what happens in the brain of someone with Alzheimer's. Eventually, in the final stage of Alzheimer's, the dysfunctional neurons have accumulated so much of the faulty protein that they are completely unable to functionally communicate with neighbouring cells. Alzheimer's affects 60% of those with dementia and can cause grief to both sufferers and their families. In the UK alone, almost £26 billion a year goes towards dementia. Despite this, we are yet to find a cure. Researchers at the University of Edinburgh have been studying minuscule sections of donated brains, reprogramming cells in petri dishes, creating transgenic mice and working with sufferers of dementia to try and understand the protein accumulation aspect of Alzheimer's. By understanding the processes and factors involved in this accumulation, scientists hope to develop a drug which could target and inhibit the key enzymes involved and prevent further damage. <laughs>